I just turned 26. Thank you. <laughs> Piss off. I've had a hard life, okay? Jesus. Actually, I just turned 50. No, seriously, I'm at the age now. If I'm lucky enough to be making out with a 25-year-old, I give her a little swat in the ass, whisper, who's your daddy? She says, ain't you? Wait a minute, what's all the groaning about? There's a bullshit double standard going on. How come it's okay for the older woman to have it off with a younger man, right? You got that Demi Whore and Doogie Hauser. I mean, I mean, come on, guys, we're getting shortchanged on this one. Like, a woman turns 40, what? She's a cougar, a mill for a yummy mummy. Guy turns 40, he's a stalker, a diddler, a sexual predator. see that in all the movies and all that. What was the big movie last year that all the women were all going crazy for Sex in the City? Now, come on, aren't those girls getting a little old for that? Come on, they should have called it Old Hoes in the Hood. <laughs> all I'm saying, ladies, go a little easy on the chick legs, will you? How to lose a guy in 10 days? You want to lose him in 90 minutes? Make him sit through that shit. So, hey, buddy, so you just turned 50, is that it? Your 50th birthday? 50th, wow. Do you find it's kind of weird, like, as you're getting older, do you find, like, you fall asleep a lot? No, like, no, it's the same thing, like, New Year's Eve, for example. I can never make it to New Year's Eve. But I figured this way, if I want to see the ball drop, i just take my pants off. <laughs> no, seriously, folks, the health, the health is falling apart. I had to go to the doctor the other day, the hemorrhoids were flaring up. I said, Doc, how bad are they? And he said, let me get my golf bag. <laughs> I got so much preparation H up my ass, my farts are coming out with a lisp. <laughs> but, but thank God I'm not getting forgetful, but I am getting dyslexic. Like last Christmas, the uh, kids wanted a DVD of that uh, country group, what is that, the Dixie Chicks? Yeah, I made a mistake, I got them chicks with dicks. <laughs> My mother, God bless her, she's 85. And she's gotten to that point in her life where she's given up on people and she's turned to cats. Okay, and she's got this one cat, okay? This poor thing is ancient. It's got every disease you can think of. It can't even meow anymore. It just hobbles around the house sounding like a dying cow going, nah, nah, nah. I said, Ma, look, the poor thing's suffering. Let me take it down to the vet and put it down. She says, why? Because she's old? That's what you want to do to me, isn't it? I said, Mom, if it was a $75 injection with no questions asked, we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> Here's an actual announcement I read in the uh, Hamilton Spectator. I'm not making this up. It said, uh, in the obituaries, it said, uh, William Sanderson, in his 102nd year, died suddenly. <laughs> Shouldn't that be finally, folks? I mean, uh... You don't live your kids and screw them out of the inheritance. Maybe you've overstayed your welcome. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, weird things will start happening. Your body will start getting older. You young guys are going to find that out. Man. The hair starts growing again in a place it previously stopped. <laughs> yeah. No. I actually shaved the hair down there just to make it look bigger. <laughs> Well, same thing with ladies, though. You should consider a little bit of shaving now and then to kind of enhance your own pleasure. I used to go with this one girl, this Bulgarian girl. She never shaved. I'd be working her for a good hour and nothing. Then she'd tell me I was licking her navel. I... Well, I do feel sorry, though, for these young guys. you got to deal with these young girls. All you young girls in the millennium, all watching Dr. Phil read those little self-help book, you know, the, I'm okay, he's a jerk. <laughs> and these girls come up and tell you, you're down, they'll, they'll tell you, you know, I'm not here to save you. I had a girl say that to me one time, I'm not here to save you. And she was a paramedic, what the hell chance have I got? 
And when it comes to sex, every guy in this room knows what I'm talking about. Women are greedy. No, because a woman knows you're making love with her. She knows, man. Just about to get to that point, you know, popping your cookies, she stops to prolong her own pleasure. As I go up, this one girl, every time we made love, that's what it was, start and stop. Start and stop. Start and stop. Finally, I tell us, I said, look, lady, my name ain't Otis. It ain't no elevator. Pick a floor and get off. Oh, but it's you women. You're all so full of contradictions there. You know, you like to act all prim and proper, but every guy in this room knows what I'm talking about in this one. You let any group of women loose in one of those adult sex stores or at your little Fantasia parties. First thing they do, guys, right to the marital aids, commonly known to us guys as torture devices. I had one girl, one girl got me a, uh, a cock ring. Now, now, these things don't come with any instructions, okay? I didn't know you had to have a heart on first. My damn balls are swollen out to here. Another time, she got me a butt plug. All right, didn't do anything for me, but I haven't had to walk the dog for a week, so. <laughs> but you ever had this happen, guys, though? You're making love with your lady. All of a sudden, she starts playing around your backside. <laughs> First time that happened, scared the hell out of me. I thought the husband came home. <laughs> But I gotta admit though, when it comes to women, I love women of all sizes and shapes. I tend to lean more towards the Rubenesque woman. I think weight's a beautiful thing, ladies. I don't think you should fight it at all. Because you have to ask yourself a very important question. Who sets the standards for beauty in Western culture? The fashion industry. Who runs the fashion industry? The gays. That's why all these runway models look like anorexic drag queens. No, they take off their clothes and can't tell which way they're facing you. <laughs> no, seriously, ladies, I'm gonna take a stand on this. If you've got a husband or boyfriend out there is on you about weight, if he wants to put you on those dangerous diets or have you work out on a gymnasium till you end up the same figure as some 10 year old boy, look him right in the eye, tell him to strap on the silver glove and moonwalk his way to Neverland, okay? <laughs> That's right, put it up for the big girls. Big girls are beautiful. A big girl's always in fashion. A big girl can put on a bikini and two steps later, she's wearing a thong. That's beautiful. Okay, we're gonna do uh, some impression for you guys now, right? Here's kind of a, this is kind of a weird one. We're gonna start off with a very strange one. So you're gonna have to kind of think about this one, okay? So here's the conversation that took place between the two morgue attendants on the night they brought Marilyn Monroe in. Uh, you can go home early, I'll close them. How about the new, uh, the new Batman? You like the new Batman? Yeah, yeah he's got that weird voice, though. He's got that type of thing inside him. Looks like we've got no problems with the Joker. <laughs> Sounds like you got problems with unfiltered cigarettes, pal. Uh, I mean, what's the sequel going to be? Watch out for the Joker. He's coming right for us. Here's something interesting. They uh, did a uh, poll on the internet and they were saying the number one comic of all time. You know who got the number one spot? 
Johnny Carson? Yeah. So let's see if we can bring the spirit of Johnny here tonight. You guys got to help me out. On the count of three. This is like having a DVD commentary all the way through my act. Thank you very much. It's like <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. Where'd you learn to whisper in a helicopter? What the hell's going on? Jeez. No, just, no, shh. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So I'll, I'll tell you, we're going to bring the spirit of Johnny Carson here tonight. So on the count of three, all together, I want you to give me a real hearty, here's Johnny. One. Two and three. Good to be back, folks. Good to be back. I um, I just got back from vacation. I was having in Mexico. Have any of you ever been to Mexico? All right, then you know I'm telling you the truth. There's one restaurant, and what they serve after the bullfight. I'm not making this up. It's the testicles of the bull. So I ordered this particular dish, and I was surprised to see how, how small they were. And the waiter explained. He said, well, sometimes the bull wins. <laughs> Latest sexual survey states conclusively that 99% of all men masturbate. The other 1%? Have no hands. I... <laughs> Is she finally gone, or what the hell's going on here? <laughs> well, oh, she's going to the washroom, isn't it? I was hoping she was going to take her chair with her. I... <laughs> I'll tell you what. Actually, we're going to do this bit right now while she's gone, because Karnak needs total silence. <laughs> I'll give you the answer and then read you the question. I think I can still hear him outside. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Osama bin Laden and pantyhose. Name two things that irritate Bush. Shall I really push it? <laughs> All right, I don't want to hear it. I know you guys have a fundraiser here, but I don't want to hear any complaints about this, so may I push it? <laughs> All right, sweetheart, she's just saying go for it. You're going to regret this, okay. <laughs> he spits on his lover's back. <laughs> How's a gay guy fake orgasm? <laughs> Shall I really push it? <laughs> right to the max? Well, you're going to regret this once you hear the setup. Uh, but once I start, I can't stop, so no complaints. I don't think I should do this. But I'm going to get in trouble for this. But you asked for it, I'm doing it. Michael Jackson. and mayonnaise. <laughs> Name two things that spread out on little crackers, I... <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's play a little game here. You guys throw out the name of any celebrity and I'll see if I can do it for you. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Give, give me a serious one. Here we go. Al Pacino, really? Okay, Al Pacino. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What, what do we do with Al Pacino? How about? Because uh, a lot of these guys are great actors, but do you think they'd be great comedians? So here, we'll try this. Well, here's Al Pacino if he was a stand-up comedian. Here we go. Good to be here. How are you? Anybody got anything to celebrate? Hey, who gives a shit? I don't care. 
I don't care. Ah, oh, she's back. How are you, sweetie? Good to see you. You heard me talking about... I heard you all the way through my fucking act. All right. Now, please. I'm going to try to entertain these other people. All right? May I do that? You're going to allow me to do that. Thank you so much. All right. You wonder why some species eat their young. I don't know. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm scared here. I am really scared. Oh. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a joke, okay? It's kind of an old joke, so if anybody knows the punchline, please, shut the fuck up. And that goes twice for your table. Shut the fuck up. Okay, matter of fact, that's shut the fuck up for the rest of the show, please. I am asking you. I don't know, huh? Okay, no. I love you, sweetheart, okay. But this ain't the Springer thing, I can hear you. Do you understand that? Okay. And I was gonna do a joke. Here we go. All right. So, a bear and a rabbit, hey, a bear and a rabbit, having a shit in the woods. Bear looks over at the rabbit and says, yo, bunny! Do you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? Little bunny says, no, I do not have problems with shit sticking to my fur. So the bear wipes his ass with the rabbit. <laughs> I'm sorry the stoners didn't get it. They'll get it in about 20 minutes. Thank you. All right, you didn't like that one? I'll tell you what. Hey, hey, hey. I got a guy, Jack Lemon. Remember Jack Lemon? Jack Lemon, okay. This guy can tell a fucking joke. So I'm gonna bring Jack Lemon out here. He's gonna tell you guys a joke. So Jack, get on out here. How the hell are you? Good to see you. My God, what a good looking crowd we got going on here. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, we're gonna lose the other one now. Thank God for that. All right, there you go. No, no, no problem at all, sweetheart. Anyway, okay, I got a story to tell you guys, all right? And it's a, it's a story about a woman, okay? She's a poor woman, she's in a coma, for God's sake. And no matter what, you know, like the, 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 the husband sits there and he starts stroking the hands, but there's no reaction. So the doctor comes up with this idea. He says, this is uh, really unorthodox, but maybe, just maybe, if you had oral sex, they might snap her out of it. Now, we're gonna give you the privacy. So the doctor and nurse, they go in the other room. They're sitting there, they're watching the monitors. The monitors won't beep. A beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. And then all of a sudden, the flat line. Beep. So the doctor and the nurse, they run back in there. They see it. They start pounding on the chest of the poor woman. They say, what the hell happened? And the husband says, I don't know, doc, but I think she choked. <laughs> Fuck you. That was funny. Okay, you guys ready for the uh, single most tasteless joke you'll hear tonight? I know he probably thought the Michael Jackson one, well, no problem. How, how could I get any lower than that? Well, there's one more joke, and the only, the only guy that could possibly deliver this joke is Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter, if he was a stand-up comedian. Here we go. Good evening. So... What did the cannibal do after he dumped his girlfriend? He wiped his ass. <laughs> Piss off, he's a cannibal. What the hell else would he say? Give me a break on that one. <laughs> That's a little bit too much for you. <laughs> 